I bet they went to the gym. They went to the gym. see from the title we're talking about fitness and we're gonna jump right in every morning you have two choices continue to sleep with your dreams or wake up and chase them on this channel we're choosing to chase them i'm connecting with some pretty cool dream chasers and getting all in their business they say millennials always have something to say i don't know let's talk about it All right, my name is Sadia, also known as Simply Tone. Hi, I'm Candler. Christian Osborne, the physique engineer. I'm Jasmine, body by Jazzy. Omari, multi-fitness. All right, cool. So, <laughs> the million dollar question, how do you guys stay motivated? I think a lot of people look at this video are like, man, I'm not going to the gym today, I just got off work. I'm not waking up early before work. It's just not happening. What do you guys do? You know, I'm sure you guys have heard of like having a why. That's something I learned really early into the game, like, you know, to continue to go and be refueled every time, you have to have like a reason why you do it. So I have a lot of different reasons, but a big one is self-care. Like I just really like taking care of myself. And I think it's about figuring out what pushes you. And sometimes it helps me to write out my goals. So if I write them out and I see like what I'm trying to accomplish, it really helps. You have to make it all about the clients for me. Because it's all, if you, if you are taking care of your body and you're training them, they're going to be the one, they're going to be more liable to take care of theirs. People are seeing what you're doing and getting motivated by what you're doing. So if you're not active and you're not constantly doing something active and inspiring other people to do the same thing, then... Well, you tried me because you said diet, and you tried me because you said diet, so no more of that, because okay. we already talked about off camera how some of us like chicken wings. But of course, everybody that is. <laughs> <laughs> but, fine is a main motivation, you know. But for me, I think like, the gym is the one thing I can control. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can put as much work at work and not get promoted. I can put as much work on my friendships and not be closer. But the gym, what you put into the gym, you get from the gym. It's no cutting corners, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I love about the gym, like, it is. But since you guys are so eager to talk about diet, we can go on the diet. I personally feel like, and this is being real talk, you can't outwork a bad diet. I really feel that way because for me, like, I eat terribly and I work out hard, but it's still like my body, the way I work out should be way more lean than I am. But it's like battling the chicken wings and the pizza and the fries and the Chick-fil-A and the Wendy's and the Nancy. All right, we get it on All right. I'm just saying, like, when I think about food sometimes, it just really makes me like happy, you know, and I really, all right. We can't be around you. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. nutrition 20% fitness. I tell all my clients when you're working out with me you're buying a different lifestyle so mm. you're, you have to buy something that you can actually add to yourself to where you won't set yourself up for failure because right. I right. think yeah. I don't believe that anything should be off limits I, what, what I do believe is that um, <clears throat> anything in moderation is and just to piggyback off of that, <clears throat> yeah, I'm really big on balance. So like, since I've been doing fitness for a while, I used to eat like completely clean, like like seven days a week, probably six months straight. I would never have like a cheat meal. And of course, I like my body, like I was super lean. But then over time, I realized that you know, just with playing with different things, that um, it is balanced because the moment I would have something bad, I would like fall right back into like eating horribly you know it's just like i forgot like what like food tastes like for real because <laughs> healthy food it tastes so bland sometimes so. eating isn't as hard for me eating healthy because i figure out ways to make it taste good for me gotcha so if you're the type of person that know that you eat bad and there's certain things that you just love and you have to have figure out a healthier form of that same meal like i'm a louisiana girl i like anything seafood cajun Seasoning, okay. I gotta give her a high five. Yeah. For me, I went cold turkey when I got to my optimal results, like, and I had no problem with it. Right. Yeah. And so when I have a client, like, I don't know, I just can't eat. It's like, how? Like, yeah. you're not where you want to be at. So why aren't you eating right? But then, even with me wanting to vote, it's hard to me. It's hard eating more than it is to eat less. So That's I can see how some things can just be tough 
to do, and you know, we might not understand it because we got some other jobs. So if we know that this pizza or pancakes or whatever is gonna mess up, like, I don't want it. Everybody yes, don't know their why yet. Yeah. The why can't be vacation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Why yeah. Is, it has to be like a feeling. It has to be like I feel energized when I work out. Right. I feel like a better me. I don't mm -hmm. feel complete without it. I know it sounds dramatic, but that's no, seriously. Like yeah. what it is. I kept working out because it made me happy. Like, that's what I was wearing. Without it, I'm like, I've been to the gym in like a week. I feel weird. Like I need to get in the gym. Right. I need to right. do something active. Y'all, I was literally trying to gain. I was 100 pounds. I was so small. small. <laughs> right. My dad died. I lost 25 pounds. I was extremely depressed yeah. like i didn't know whether i was coming or going some days i literally didn't have a reason to get up every mm -hmm. day yep. so when i looked at a picture of myself on my birthday of last year i was like you look like you're on crack <laughs> and i'm like what is going i was the smallest after having two kids i've ever been in my life fitness is an investment just kind of like what you said earlier like it's a lifestyle so um people go into it thinking it's gonna just immediately change their life and um, they're gonna see immediate results but sometimes their why is bigger than what their fitness goal is you know what i'm saying so yeah. it's like what they're trying to accomplish they don't even understand takes so much time because the reason they got to that point also took a long time you know so like right. when you're depressed you know you're depressed for a long state if you're depressed for 10 months you can't expect to go into the gym and get results within two months so speaking of time though and it's back, back to your point. I feel like when it comes to bad diet, for me, for instance, I don't have time. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like I have time to come home and cook a bunch of food and yeah. prepare it all the week. So in my mind, it's way easier. From, and, and, I'll get there. <laughs> She's already like prepared. But, like, but when I get to my job, it's like it's easier to go to lunch and get something quick, easy, yes. opposed to me having a prep the food and buy the food. It's not cheap to buy the food. It seems cheaper, which yeah. which. I want to break this down real quick. It's not cheaper to it buy is. fast food. It's really, really it's, not. It's, like, it's really expensive. not. It's right. way more expensive. It's just convenient. But in our minds, it's like, this meal is $6. I'm good. But add it up times seven, times breakfast, times, three times, times dinner. Day. Right. So now it's expensive. But yeah, the time management. How do you guys get the time? I feel like it's about... <laughs> it's about making it, it's about making it fun and having like a partner like... Jazzy and Jazzy, <laughs> right? She cooks, right? And so she also teach me, teaches me good recipes and like different things to make it like you know unique to me. I cook, all right. I, I love cooking. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, I wouldn't tell everybody to do that. I would tell people to um, like if you if you don't particularly enjoy that or you don't know how to cook. Um, <laughs> what you can do is you can go to a meal prepping company. If you do a meal prepping company, you have all your meals within a day and you pay about like $20, $20 a day, which will be probably a few dollars short of what you're spending every day for fast food. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I do understand like certain people's lifestyles, it it do take a lot of time. Like, you know, with us being, you know, trainers or even, you know, distributors, we can really control more of our time. Yeah. You know, some people have like the nine to fives. I just tell them just that weekend, you just gotta find some part of Saturday, Sunday to, Meal prep because the thing if you don't have time to me, I feel like you still have no choice but the meal prep. Yeah. If you say you don't to got time, successful. yeah, to yeah. be successful. Like if you say you don't got time, you can't expect to be cooking every day. Now you gonna say I'm tired, I don't got time. So a lot of my clients always say that you know I don't have time, but I think it's a value thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. when you value something, you make time for it. So a lot of my clients they value hair. They will go to the salon for eight hours yes. and sit there, pay five hundred dollars, right, for hair. But then when it comes to eating, my it's so expensive. It's too much, it's it's too much right. time. So you got one hundred and seventy dollars lashes. Isn't that crazy? Right. So it's really a value thing. Yes, yes. 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 It's They're longer than those things. Though. Right. <laughs> it's only like six months. <laughs> I think about it as a like I'm investing in myself. I was just so like if I'm out here trying to get a Louis bag, mm -hmm. you know, some shoes, getting my nails done, why can't I like pour back into myself and my health and For things sure. of that nature? So it's like how am I gonna motivate somebody else if I'm not doing it? For sure. So to kinda of go back. So the people who say I don't wanna to go to the gym. I wanna get fit, but I don't wanna to go to the gym. I mean I have time to go to an actual commercial gym or a boutique gym, mm -hmm. but I still wanna get fit. Yeah. What do you say? So for that like you have things in your home that you can use to work out your body itself is weightless right so there's no excuse as to why you can't get some form of workout now, if you are on a job all day if you can give a job eight hours that goes along with the meal prepping thing it's an investment you're investing in yourself your life 
We have so many young people dying of heart attacks, high blood pressure at young ages. That's because they're investing more in McDonald's and Chick-fil-A than they are in them their, themselves. You can't Absolutely. control the cholesterol in the foods, the salt intake when you're eating out. Right. So if you're making an investment in yourself, let me take this time out of my week to invest and make sure that my temple is gonna be 100%, right? right? So even with you in the gym, like people used to laugh at me at work because I would be squatting at work. Like standing there like I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Like when I asked my older homeboys like put me in the gym when I was like a sophomore in college, they were like, bro, no, I need 50 push-ups a night for the next month or two. And if you do that, then we can hit the weights. But they were like, get them push-ups, just get in the corner. And, and, work. and that put a little a little weight on me for real. I was like, okay, I'm ready to kind of get here and get a little pump more so than coming in there cold right. and not being able to lift anything. Then we did that. Like, hey, brother. Like, here comes the little dude. I know. Hey, brother, bottom, bottom. Bottom on the side. No, I have a problem, like, too. If you want to work out, I'm like, uh, Me too. If it's, like, if it's like Christian or select few others, you no, no, I don't have time me taking the weight off every set. Yeah. And I got At that point, you're training <laughs> them. Like, like, right, right. Right. Now, you need to pay me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm training <laughs> them. Okay, but that, okay, he's forward. Uh -huh. I'm looking at the gym and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, right. She doing it could be very intimidating. So if you just getting started, figure yeah. out what works for you. Like she said, your body is your gym. So do circuits, you know. Right. Figure yeah. out what body part you're going to work on. Google, look up the workouts. For sure. And just do them, like, you know, file around. Yeah. Like, simple. Because my couch was LA Fitness for a long time. I was hitting trauma. Uh, this? <laughs> okay. I was going incline. Take it to the couch. Exactly. And you're good. 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 you People, it actually makes it easier for me. But people who don't like the gym, I actually do virtual training. So that is something that's really like opened up for me. And I think you have to meet clients where they are, you know, like not everybody's gonna like the gym. And I think it's understandable because like we said, we're all trainers. So it's easy to be like, no, you know, go to the gym. You have to like prioritize things. But like my virtual clients, they really feel comfortable at home. There's a thing called uh, visceral fat. Have y'all heard of that? No. Yeah. So there is so like obesity pills. is an epidemic itself, but it's more so like that's your outer appearance. We see obesity as a physical thing, mm -hmm. but then there's visceral fat. Visceral fat is the fat that's deep within your organs. That's so all like what I got. Organs. It's on top. Yeah, it's on your organs. Yeah, I was gonna say. You don't. You don't. You don't have that. You would, like, you, you I mean, you can't see that from the outside of anywhere, but God. that's Look, the reason. That, too. <laughs> that like visceral fat is the reason for coronary heart disease, cancer, like all that stuff. When you have fat around it's your organs. Right. 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 To, um, that's why diet is so stressed because if you're a diet's not right, I mean, you can't say diet without diet. Without diet. I want to talk more about the motivation piece because I thought like that's like the first step into getting in the gym. We can talk about what happens when you get there, but how do you get there, right? Mm -hmm. And like the same thing happens with church. They say like sinners shouldn't go to church, but sinners are supposed to be in church. It's for you. I'm too out of shape for the gym. That's who it's for, That's you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's like, it's what, do you guys have any personal mantras? For me, I'm coming from a skinny man's perspective. So mm -hmm. I used to be like, like you know, I was 100 pounds probably, and I'm 6'3". I was probably like a buck 40. A buck 40, am I lying? I was like a buck 45. I'll put a, but what helped me was, I can't get worse by going to the gym. You know what I'm saying? I can't get smaller by being in this space. So every day I went to the gym, I had to black out the fact that I had really good, what you said, accountability and a partner. I had a really, really good person beside me to kind of, and honestly, I kind of am an advocate for people getting friends who are kind of in their same fitness space, getting somebody who can help you, of course, but also getting a peer who's kind of on the same track you are. You guys might wear the same or be the same body type, mesomorphs, whatever. So you can kind of grow together, which can help each other say, oh, you know, I did good today, you did good today, okay cool, I'm gonna do good today too, because if you did it, I can't. Opposed to saying, I did good today, you're like, of course you did good today, you're a trainer, like, right. Bro, what? Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And you, do <laughs> you do this all the time. So what do you guys like tell yourselves, or what did you tell yourselves before you became? I feel like for me, I find a lot of people relate to me because 
mine fueled from insecurities at first. Mm. So I was super little, um, what was this, like sophomore year in college. And um, just seeing like, you know, on Instagram, you see these people with these coke body shapes. Mm. I was in a relationship at the time and you know, some infidelity was going on. I noticed that all the girls was, you know, real thick. So in my head, just to be real, I'm being yeah, yeah, transparent. Um, I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna be skinny anymore. I wanna, you know, go work out and I'm not gonna, you know, go get, what you call it, enhancements right. or anything, but I wanna do it the natural way and I wanna push myself, I wanna do this for myself. So I got in the gym and I realized that, oh my gosh, like, is this my passion? So I started like, finding Camler, I started finding out what I loved about myself, yeah. um, what made me happy every day. Yeah. Okay, so I kind of fell into training, but as I look back, it was always in my life. But in high school, I was going through a lot. So like my, I, I ran track, so that was like my outlet. And so within that being my outlet, it kind of really just, not only just doing it for myself, I um, realized I had to get the motivation. So like I was able to motivate people. So um, from that, like once I kind of realized um, just how much I was changing people's lives and how much I was impacting people. It just kind of, it like it fuels me to fuel other people, if that makes sense, yeah. you know? So since like I get motivation and I feel fueled when someone's like, oh my gosh, like you don't know what you've done for me or you know, I lost this amount of weight or I gained this and all right. that stuff. So that motivates me. I'm real spiritual. So I feel like I'm not doing what I would set out to do if I'm not helping other people. If I'm not being a servant right. and actually doing something to serve other people, which fitness does that, not just for yourself, but for other people. We are living in a monkey see, monkey do world. Right. People do what they see other people doing. Yeah. So if you're actually, my sponsor with Herbalife told me, if you're consistent for something with something for 90 days, the world has no choice but to be receptive to it, right? right. And it took me to actually say, let me give this a try. And I swear to y'all, when you're consistent, that's with anything in life, that's with spiritually, with your finances, with fitness, yeah. with your eating goals, in life period. If you're consistent with something for 90 days, it is your life. It's something that's set in yeah. and you're gonna consistently do it. I love the 90 days because I feel like <laughs> a lot of people really would like, that turns that corner is that small bit of results you see yeah. at that 90 days. For yeah. me it was like, Cause it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen until you. Hey bro, we going to the gym, bro, let's go. You know what I'm saying? I was ready after that. I saw a little bicep, I was like, oh yeah, we going there, bro. We going there. <laughs> Omar, what you got? Oh, I mean, with me, uh, I mean, in the beginning, I don't know, I just always loved fitness. I did basketball, track, football, cross country. So working out was always in my routine. Yeah. But then once I got to one point in high school, I wasn't doing any sports, had a lot of stuff going on with family and everything. So at the end, it was like, I still got to work out, though. I still got to move. So it, it wasn't hard for me to keep working out. But then what I will say is, at some point in college, like, I got to a size. Like, me, I, I lost weight, you know, through going through certain stuff in life. Yeah. But when I was at my biggest, so many people were just like, you know, you good where you at, you good where you at, you know, you don't got to do that, you don't got to do that. So, and then I, got, I started getting more busy. So I feel like I got to a point where, okay, I wasn't working as hard. Yeah. So then once I started seeing results leaving, and I just like, I was like, you know what, I don't like that. So it's just, I don't know, something in me is just, I don't like taking back the step. To enjoy fitness and to be able to go through the process, you do have to attach a positive feeling to it. You know, because yeah. she really came into the gym like, oh, I can't do this, like it's so hard and all that stuff. I'm like, it's what you're attaching to it, you know, because if she was going to get her nails done and sitting there for two hours, it's like, she's attaching, oh my goodness, my nails are gonna look good after I'm done. But when she comes to the gym, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, like I'm gonna be uncomfortable, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna be that. So it is, I think within all of us, we attach a positive feeling towards fitness. You know, it's just like, yeah. We all desire to get better, so because of that, we we like to continue to pursue our fitness journey. And the body is set up for that as well. Like when we get yeah. done, you have the endorphins running, and yeah. you feel good about the workout, and you feel good about everything. Else. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna give y'all a pick. Like, I'm gonna give y'all these. Okay. Cool that's what we're coming for. Y'all get the other pick. I'm back at what size? But what you were saying, I think like. I always say like your clothes are your biggest snitch. You know what I'm saying? Like so, like when them clothes start to loosen a little bit, oh, it's like am I losing? Am I losing games? Let me get back in the gym. Okay. Oh, when I feel like, oh, a little too snug. Some days it's the realest thing. Yeah. Sometimes I start a little loose running. Right. When I feel the loose, oh shit. Whenever my shirt passes this little thing. I'm like, wait a minute, bro. It shouldn't be that yeah, weird, bro. Yeah, yeah. It should, this bicep <laughs> should cancel some stuff out. <laughs> this is 
No, real. real I'm calling her. Hey, yo, look, I'm gonna send you a before and after picture of me last week, this week. Tell me which one I look. You know, <laughs> I need to know. Right, is this you shirt know I need to be a I'm always snapping pictures. I'm always sending pictures. I'm like, 